If there's ever a conspiracy theory that'll get you, this one uh, is one that makes you scratch your head. Two cameras broken, two guards sleeping at the same time. They hadn't made their mandatory 30-minute rounds in the past three hours. Like you mentioned, a roommate that had been transferred away several days beforehand. He'd been taken off suicide watch despite the fact that less than two weeks beforehand, he'd been found semi-conscious with marks on his neck in his exactly. own cell. You mentioned he's one of the yeah. highest profile prisoners. Even with the history of the Bureau of Prisons, meaning that they're overworked and understaffed, that there's corruption, that they haven't implemented reform. It seems to me that there are an awful lot of questions that still need to be asked. And this stuff from the autopsy, from this doctor who was hired by Mark Epstein, who's Jeffrey Epstein's brother, just raises more questions. The hemorrhages uh, in his eyes as well. Talk to me about the forensic aspect of that. Sure. Well, petechial hemorrhaging occurs, and those are the broken blood vessels in the eye and sometimes in, around the mouth. Those take place uh, classically in, in strangulations, but to be quite honest, they're also present in hanging. I've seen another a number of them, but I would go a little bit deeper into the pathology here, and I would uh, make sure that when the autopsy is re-reviewed, they did a radiology on the bones, and they also did a histology, uh, which is a, a cell structure uh, examination uh, to make sure that uh, the injuries were anti-mortem, okay? So in other words, before he actually died, what was the mechanism of injury that killed him? You know, classically, uh, my understanding and the way he was found was a suspension hanging. In other words, a ligature, he placed a ligature allegedly around his neck and then leaned forward. So this wasn't a jump hanging. A jump hanging, we would, we would see a cervical uh, fractures, and we would see some some fractures around the cricoid uh, cartilage, cricoid and hyoid bone, but not necessarily from a suspension hanging. Okay, so remember, when the person suspends themselves, they cut off the oxygenated blood to the brain, which becomes hypoxic, and then they pass out. They can pass out in as early as 15 seconds. And then the body leans forward, which places more pressure, but not necessarily sufficient pressure to, to fracture all three of those bones. So that's where I find myself in agreement with Dr. Bodden. Somewhat rare.